and gentlemen, here it is, the most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any materials produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, paranormalbuzzradio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Paranormal Buzz Radio is proud to present Girls vs. Ghost Media's The Dr. Gina Show with Gina Marie. Gina is a psychic medium and an intuitive counselor who has a bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in counseling, and a doctorate degree in occupational therapy. The Dr. Gina Show is live on Spreaker every other Monday. 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, 6 Pacific, right here on Paranormal Buzz Radio. Here's your host, Gina Marie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Gina Show. Tonight, I am going to talk about energy. So thank you all that are listening, and thank you all that are listening to the pre-recorded show. And just so you know, that chat is open, and Shay is on chat. So if you want to say hello or post anything, and then, like we always do, 20 minutes before the show ends, Shay comes on, and we talk in chat, answer any questions. So anything that you think of during the show just get your questions ready, post them, be interactive. You can all talk to each other when you're in chat. And that's what chat is for. It's an interactive chat. So feel free to post anything, even if you just want to say hi, so I know you're out there. And um, just have fun. Just listen and learn and interact with each other. Get to know everybody. And it's, it's a good group of people, so good energy. Tonight's show is energy. I talk a lot about energy. And um, as me, regular Gina, like I like to call myself, I'm regular Gina. Because if you do a session with me, you get Dr. Gina. You know, I have a doctorate. I'm a counselor. I, I use that, a lot of my book skills. But I also use a lot of my psychic mediumship when I'm in a channel and I'm talking to spirit. So you never really know who you're getting it's like back and forth you get a little channel Gina's channeling the council or I'm channeling my higher self or different spirits so tonight when I was talking I was thinking um Shay will always ask me um you know what is it what's your topic going to be and sometimes you know as I she'll ask me and I just I'll ask spirit I'll say well what should I talk about and they tell me so they say energy I was like, okay, well, I've been talking a lot about energy in different forms. And if you follow me, follow my social media, or you listen to anything I say, I'm always, always, always talking about the emotional scale. So I always talk about that Hawkins emotional scale. Even me, regular Gina, lives by this emotional scale. And I, I, I know it so well, and I, I never really understood how important energy was, probably till the last year, and I I don't even say year, probably since like August, I've been really putting more energy work into my life. Yes, again, like I've always talked to dead people, talked to spirit, I've always been psychic, Um, so I always have used that type of energy. And I've done readings, given psychic readings, talking about, you know, talking to dead people, I've, I've done that. But recently, I've been doing a lot of, you know, the journey of the soul. And that is when I, I do readings, looking into the journey of the soul, I talk to the council, look at your Akashic records, 
they guide me to your Akashic Records, some of the things that you've went through in your past lives, some of the things that you wanted to do here, some of your soul contracts, and the energy and the souls that you have contracts with and that you engage with here. So as I've been learning, because I learned when I channel, I might not hear it all the time because when I'm channeling, it's almost like I'm in like sleep type paralysis. So I can hear it, but I can't always stop it. So I know there's been shows, and after I've done my shows, I'll call it my best friend Joanna, and I'll be like, hey, Joanna, I, I can't believe, like, you know, my higher self was talking, and, and it was like sleep paralysis. I couldn't stop, and I'm telling, like, all my regular Gina life stories. And then I, was, I hear my higher self say, I'm trying to jump in, like regular Gina's trying to jump in and talk, and my higher self is pretty much saying, like, no, you have to say this because, you know, this – helps people. And I was like, oh my God. So my screw up, my life, everything I've screwed up in <laughs> helps people to see where I was, where I came from. And I just got to sit here like in sleep paralysis and listen to like my higher self tell all this shit that I've been through. <laughs> that happens. I'm just like, oh my God. I just remember one time I'm like, just stop, stop talking. And it was like, I'm in a channel. I, I can't stop talking. <laughs> so they want to talk about energy tonight. And different type of energy. So like I said, I always talk about the emotional scale. And always, I found this to be so true, especially because I've been bringing it more into practice. So when you vibrate low on that emotional scale, just uh, I tell all my clients this, pull up the emotional scale and look at the emotional scale. And at the bottom of the emotional scale, scale there's energies, right, vibrations that are down there and fear and um, lack, and apathy, all those, like, I call them, like, dirty energies, and I definitely, you know, been telling you guys for so long, for the last, like, four and a half years, I had been slowly destroying myself till I started the last couple of years really vibrating so low in that fear, and apathy, and um, shame, and guilt. And because I vibrated there for so long, that became my homeostasis energy vibration. So what did I attract? You know, everything that encompassed that, whether that's relationships, work, living arrangements, anything in my life was somewhere down there in gross, yucky, negative, low energies because that was my homeostasis. And if I tried to raise my energy, my vibration up on that emotional scale, at least to neutral or anger, I... I didn't stay for so long. I, I kept sliding back down. I, and I still have slid back down as of, you know, recently, I, I still slide back down that energy, emotional scale and, and lack or fear or shame or guilt. I do because like I vibrated there for so long, it became my norm that now when I do slide back down there, I don't stay as long. I can feel my energy going off when I slide down because now I know what it's like to be up there in neutral. I haven't made it to the top of the energy scale yet in joy and happiness. Like I might for an hour, a couple hours a day, but it, it, it takes a lot of work. It does. And I'm trying to just remain neutral at times. And it's so much work between meditation, self-care, just diet, the people, energy, like every single thing is important. And it started, again, if you guys were following me, where around Christmas, a little before Christmas time, when I was really like, I have to clear this out. And in my house in Jersey, in saw my pictures, I cleared, I threw out so much stuff, so much like old energy. Just I would look at an object, and I talked about this in my show, and said, oh, this, you know, I, I see where the energy was vibrating in that, whether it was clothing or books or whatever it was, and I threw so much stuff out from my New York apartment and my house in Jersey. I just went through everything and just got rid of all the energy. And then I got rid of a lot of people and situations in my life that was just keeping me in that energy of lowness on the emotional scale because I knew, I didn't know, but I, I wanted to try to see if I could raise my energy, raise my vibration, vibrate high enough to see if there would be change. And I was just talking about this today with my friend Joanna, I was like, when I was a teenager, I was in my early 20s, all the way up until five years ago, really, and 
until then, like life for me was, I, I had an amazing life since I was a kid. Like anything I wanted, pretty much school was easy, pretty spoiled. I went to the best colleges, went to all Ivy League schools, school was easy, always had a relationship. Can't say the relationship was like always the greatest, you know, there's ups and downs, but definitely a lot of love, a lot of give and take in, in the relationships that I've had, had, you know, they didn't stay for whatever changes I've made, but I had pretty good connections in my relationships. And it wasn't until like four and a half years ago when I had slid so low for so many reasons in work and relationship and living and everything. And, and I became so low in the energy. That's where I was. And recently, like I said, around August, I started looking at that energy and really studying it for some reason. And spirit was talking to me about not just talking to dead people, not just talk, giving psychic readings, but really looking at the journey of the soul and what we're made up of the energy. And that probably started, like I said, around August. And I worked hard on this by meditating, which I have spoke about was very new for me. And I started and doing yoga, which I hated. So I made myself do yoga. I made myself do the sauna, sit in those hot things that I hated. Three things I hated. The sauna, yoga, and meditation. Just never seemed to vibrate. But I kept pushing myself to do them. And now, like, I have to do them. At least once a week, yoga. At least once a week, meditation. I can't say I'm doing it every day. You know, no, definitely not. But at least once a week, I try to do one of them and do some type of sauna to put my body in that element and then some kind of cold shower afterwards change. So I just had to work up the energy and I kept working on it, getting rid of the stuff. Like I said, getting rid of objects, getting rid of clothing, getting rid of people. Um, even like relationships, like guys that I was seeing, just like looking at that and saying, man, this, this vibration has me here or there. And, and I, it's just not working. Relationships that I, you know, I was in for a while. I just, I realized like this has to change. But even more so recently, around Christmas, I, if I wasn't even long ago, Thanksgiving. So this holiday season, Thanksgiving, the last few holiday seasons for me has been difficult. My grandma's gone, and plus I was very low on the emotional scale. I pretty much hated the holiday season from November until. January, then, of course, there's fucking Valentine's Day, so I hated that, too. And that was probably for the last four years. So uh, this holiday season, and being in New York, it makes it that much worse. Everybody's so happy, the fucking Christmas music, and I'm like the Grinch over here. Like, my energy is all fuck Christmas, fuck the holidays, like, just hide out, don't want to go see family, don't want to do nothing. It's just like, I just want to get it over with. I want to hide and get it over with. And the past few years has been fucking horrible. This Christmas, I went to a spa with my friend, Rosanna. I've never even been to a spa before. So she's like, Christmas Day, let's go. So I, I made myself go to the spa. It was like Spa Castle in Queens in New York. And I went, and I'm just like, first I had to get past all the naked women. Like, everyone was naked. Everyone, even my friend, she was like, she was, right? And I was like the only one in a bathing suit. Everybody was naked. I just thought, this is fucking whack, man. Like, I had to look at a bunch of naked people. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But once I got past that, the whole naked thing, I just, and I was a dancer for a long time, but, you know, I just, I don't know, this whole thing about being in the spa with all these naked women or whatever. But I realized that being in this spa was actually bringing up my vibration. It was, like, amazing. Like, I'm now hooked on spas. I have to go all the time because it, it brings up your energy. It brings up your vibration, for sure. So right around Christmas, again, that's when I started clearing my stuff, getting rid of the energies, broke up with, you know, stopped seeing someone that I was seeing because I felt like I was low on the emotional scale, just really clearing things out. And that's when spirit started, my higher self. I started getting more in touch with my higher self because I always was like, I, you know, my clients are doing so good. They're bringing their energy up. They're bringing vibrations up. They're getting things in their life. They're passing their tests. They're hashtag passing their fucking tests. But, you know, regular old Gina sliding down the scale. Why? I said, well, you know, I wish I had someone to talk to. Like, they have to talk to me, right? But I thought, but I don't. Then Spirit would tell me, as you guys know, when I do these 
shows, I started doing universal readings with tarot cards. And it was a way for me to be able to connect. So spirit started telling me, my higher self started coming through and telling me, you know, through meditation and downloads, I was, I'm able to now, which is so recently, talk to my higher self. So my higher self said that I have to start talking with my clients about more of the journey of the soul, more of their energy, more counseling. So now I do more programs with my clients and we speak on weekly basis, sometimes once a week, sometimes twice a week. And, and I, of course, most of my work through my clients is channeled. So they started telling me about this energy. So this is even more whack than ever. Believe me, when I first started talking to dead people, well, I've, I've talked to dead people since I was a child. But when I first started you know, doing galleries and connecting to dead people. And if you've ever been to one of my galleries or even had a reading with me, when I have a connection, like if I'm not getting a name, I'm getting an initial and my details are crazy. And even for me, when I was doing that, I was like, this is crazy. And then I started talking to dead animals with their names. And I was like, this is crazy. Then I would do like the psychic readings and start being able to tell people all kinds of things that, you know, we're so on point. And I still, as a skeptic, because I'm still skeptic, believe it or not, as much as I talk to dead people, as much as I'm, I'm a psychic, I'm good at both, I'm still skeptical. I still am. I still even used to question myself, like, wow, well, maybe I just had deductive reasoning. Maybe I knew that. I still question myself. I'm still a skeptic. Even with my readings, I'm like, I come across, like, maybe I, I figured that out because of that. Like, I always come across something like, it's hard for me to even believe still, even though I do it. <laughs> um, so anyway, so my higher self, my spirit is talking to me. And I always tell you guys the story of the first time I heard my higher self talk. And I was laying in bed next to the guy I was seeing. And I was laying there, and it was so weird. It was kind of, again, like I was in sleep paralysis. And I heard my higher self, he was sleeping, talking to his higher self. And my higher self pretty much was talking to him, and his higher self said, this is where she leaves you. And my higher self said, yes. And then they both kind of laughed, gave each other a high five, and said, see you soon. And I just remember, like, I was getting ready to leave, but I I wasn't sure when. I wasn't even sure. And I looked back at that because I wind up, like, leaving him. But I looked back, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I heard that whole conversation. And then they pretty much high five and said, we'll see you soon. Of course, you know, we got back together. And I was like, oh, my God. I look back and I was like, I can talk to my higher self. So lately, my higher self, who and, and back at, when I was a kid, I was talking to one of my clients, Michelle, and I was telling her when I was little, I used to watch this show, Bewitched, and like, I always wanted to be a witch. You know, I'm a witch, I'm a witch. I used to say that since I was little. I know why now, but at the time, my parents were like, don't tell everyone that. But I used to watch Bewitched. And every time my grandma would say, Gina, did you do this? Or whatever was done wrong or letting the stray cat in or feeding the stray cats yes since I was two. I'd say, no, Tabitha did it. <laughs> so I always had like this other persona. I became a teenager. It was like the Adam family. And it was like Morticia. Like, and I always thought I was crazy. I remember we had this book about split personality or Sybil. And I thought, oh, I have split personality. I'm, I, I hear, you know, I'm two people. But what I only started to realize, and I'm telling you only when I was talking to my client Michelle was, all this time when I'd be like, I'm crazy, or even when we were teenagers when we would go out drinking, <laughs> I used to be like, oh, Morticia's coming. Like, it was always like another personality. I didn't have a fake friend, but I had this other personality I used to think. But now I realize, hey, that was my higher self, and this is just me realizing. So now I have a really good connection with my higher self. And this is going to seem completely crazy, but I, like I said, I'm getting more and more crazy. It's the dead people, psychic energy, talk to dead animal spirit now my higher self has taken it one step forward and what they're telling me is about energy and then they brought me back to when I was a kid and they're saying you remember when you were four and I remember it like it was yesterday when I was able to manifest that sword after going to the park with my friend Danny and he wanted to win a sword and I told the story a lot but for you so if you haven't heard the story we were at Clemberton Park it was in New Hampshire and he was trying to win a sword, and he couldn't win one, and I just wanted him to win so bad. So we were in my home in my yard, and then we heard this car screech, right, this loud noise in my front. We were in my backyard, and we heard this screech. And we ran out, and there was a sword laying in the middle of the street. Like, 
and he got a sword. And I just remember being in shock at four. But since then, since four, like I look back and I manifested so many things, like I, anything I wanted. Like, yes, I was a spoiled kid. I had a, a really good life, whatever I wanted. But why did I have a spoiled life? I don't know. Did I, did I manifest it? Did I make it up? Did I have everything I wanted? Like, I always had whatever I wanted. And did, did I have, like, new, new cars since I was 16? Or what? I lived in the ghetto because my family was always not on the right side of the law. So we had to do what we had to do to show that. But I always had everything I wanted. I went to the best schools. I got whatever I wanted. And I, I look back, any guy that I have, I'm like, oh, I want a guy with tattoos and piercings. I want a guy that was in a band whatever I wanted, it came. And I never really was appreciative of how they came or, or what came or, you know, I wanted to buy a house. I bought a house. I wanted another vacation house. It was always so easy. Just money was easy. Everything was easy. Never really stressed. People used to say, you don't stress, you don't worry. Nothing. I never wanted for something I didn't have. And it wasn't until four or five years ago when I got in the fight with that principal at school. I lost that career, that job. Best thing ever happened to me. But at the time, I wasn't sure. My fiance at the time had went to prison. My grandma had died. And um, my house had got flooded. And because it was a second bathroom, there was like no insurance. So then I had to fall so, fall so low. Energy fell so low, right? And I look back now, and this is what Spirit's been telling me lately, is energy, energy. How, money, money is something we ma- we made here. We man-made money. Money is something that was created by the human. But as spirits, when it, the, we first started out, it was like we didn't come here with saying, oh, we're going to have so much money. Even spirit now, when we come to the world, we don't say, I'm going to come in here with so much money. We say, I'm going to, this is the life that I'm going to go in. So, you know, say Donald Trump, he said, I'm going to go into you know, I'm a spirit, I'm a soul, I'm going to go into a life of abundance. Easy, he just, but he created that as a soul, a spirit. He went into that life. He came there. He created that energy. So this is how crazy this is. And listen to this, because the concept is insane. But I, I'm starting to do it now, and we're going to see how it goes, because already my manifestations are out the roof, and I've just started doing it, and I've manifested in the last, let's just say since November, I manifested huge things. Like, I don't, like some of it, uh, just mind-blowing things I've manifested in the last four months, where four months ago, I would have never even thought of this. And so little by little, that's why I practice the manifestations with you guys. Like when I do a reading, I'll be like, let's manifest a sword or whatever. But so that's how it started, and that became easy. I was manifesting whatever I had told you guys it was easy. Manifestations were coming easy. Then I started remembering who I was and how easy manifestations was for me with so many things, like mind-blowing things. So I've been putting it back into place now. And I realized, like, energy is your currency. Do I need money to go buy a a house? Yeah, I do, like, in, in this world. But I, when I wanted a house, I got a house. I wanted another house, I got one. I wanted a new car, I got one. How was all this coming so easy to me before? Because I didn't have no energy blocks in it. Nothing. Whatever I wanted, I had it. Whatever I wanted. So now I'm trying again. Like, I'm doing that again. I realize that I create my own reality. Everybody in my life, every situation, the bed that I'm sitting on right now, in the room that I'm sitting in, Everything, my cat, Germany, <laughs> that I'm looking at, I created all this situation. It's all me. Everything here was created by me. This is my reality that I created. And I think the law of attraction talks about create your own reality, but in a, in a different way. But here's the truth of it all. That you, I know you heard word is bond. But you, you created listening to me right now. I created you guys listening to me. This is all energy that we made. We can make our world. It seems insane, but anything you want, you can have. I know this because I've been doing it recently, 
and the things I've gotten the last four months, I thought about two, three years ago, not with all the energy blocks thinking it's never going to happen. I'm sitting here now. Like, my life is fucking really good now. Really good. You asked me four months ago, five months ago, whatever. If you know me, regular Gina, I'd be like miserable. About a year ago, I was ready to kill myself, really. Two years ago, I wanted to definitely kill myself. And, you know, when I say kill myself, I don't really probably mean kill myself, but I was just at the point of just like, fuck it, not even wanting to get up. But my life is the best it's been in the last five years. Now, I can't say five years ago it's where that was now because I have a lot of work to do, but it's become so, since I've taken on this and realized who I was and what I used to be able to do, fucking magic pretty much. Alchemist. I've read that book to Alchemist. I'm not a big reader neither, but I read that book from book to cover. I mean, cover to whatever it is. Cover to cover, whatever you want to call it. But I read that book and I'm telling you what, I now know that this is it. I've, I've created fucking everything in my life. So if I want something different, I'm going to create that shit. Nobody can stop me. Nobody's going to tell me, oh, gee, you don't have the money to go buy a house in Miami because, you know, or California, wherever. I plan to get my next house, but I'm going to get it because I'm going to create it. That's it. It's that fucking easy. And, you know, my, my car is only a few years old, but I want a new car. Like, oh, gee, you don't have the money. <laughs> Who the fuck is telling me that? Am I telling that myself? Because I'm going to get it, you know, because I'm going to create it. That's how easy it is. And I'm telling you what, you might be listening to me because I, about a few weeks ago, a month ago, when I listen to myself say something like this, I say, oh, the block that. I might even speak it out loud to someone. Oh, I don't have that for that. I can't do that. I, you know, I have to do whatever it is I have to do. But I don't have to fucking do nothing no more. Because this is money. Energy is your fucking money. It's your currency. First of all, raise your energy. Raise your vibration. Feel that you're good enough. Do you have to be so happy, happy, happy all the time to manifest? No, if you know me, I'm a miserable bitch. I really, I'm a miserable fuck. I don't really spend that time talking to many people. I don't really engage in many people. Like, actually, a really got one of the guys I really like from my gym. He's really cool. He's like one of my favorites. And um, I said hi to him the other day. Like, hey, we're taking Muay Thai class. He's like, hey, hi. He goes, man. He goes, I felt like you really meant that. He goes, usually just like have a poker face and keep it moving. I was like, and I like this dude. And so I actually give him a little more high, but I realize like I don't even expand like a half a smile of my energy for anyone anymore, unless like they have something special. I realize it don't, I don't like give eye contact. <laughs> it's just, it's just a waste of time for me anymore. I don't need to prove myself to anybody. I don't give a fuck. I do what I do. I say what I say. I don't give a shit if anyone knows I'm a medium anymore or if no one wants to believe I'm crazy because I know I'm fucking crazy. I'm fucking nuts for sure. The way I'm talking about energy now, this is fuck seems insane, but guess what? I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, and my life has changed. So crazy as it is, and the skeptic that I am, I still believe it. It's fucking nuts, but I know that energy is a powerful thing. Energy is... Where, how do I talk to dead people? How do I talk to dead people who tell me their names? who tell me how they died, who give me details that are fucking mind-blowing because they're energy. And I can take my energy, my being, and how do I talk to dead people? I take my whole being, my whole energy, and I go just to the energy of who I was. And I transmit myself over to whatever you want to call it, to the other side where my body stays here. But I move my energy because I've, I've astral traveled since I was young. Young, young, young. I, don't, I try not to do it so much because I do get tired, but it's easy for me to transmit my energy and that's how I'm a really good medium. And I, I, that's how I do it. Some mediums do it different, but for me, I actually just move my energy. So if I've moved my energy and done as much as I've done in my life and was very successful, I went until four or five years ago when I crashed and I can do it back because I don't need any money for anything. Like I wasn't, I was born into a family that, definitely wasn't poor, you know, I had everything I wanted, but I wasn't you no know, Trump family, that's for sure. But I always had what I wanted. There was never something I, I didn't want, I couldn't have, I never looked at price tags, I just 
wanted to go shopping. I, I went. I never, ever looked, ever. And there was just always coming, coming. It came, it came, whatever it was. I never wanted to have, like, a guy that was a great relationship that didn't cheat on me. I always had a boyfriend or a relationship that I wanted when I, when I wanted it. When I didn't want that one anymore, I found another one. It was easy. Never had to think about it until, again, four so years ago, and then it became like, oh, I want this, or this guy's doing this, and oh, this isn't why, because I created it. My energy was so fucking low. I had so many blocks. I thought this was hard, and that's not going to happen. If someone, and I do talk to my clients, and my, my clients have problems, and, you know, I am a counselor, a spiritual counselor. I am a medium, so I, I do listen to people tell me about their relationships, but I'm able to filter it through a different energy. It doesn't lay heavy on me. But when I'm be, being regular, Gina, and I'm not in a session, and somebody starts telling me about, oh, this sucks and that sucks, you know what? It hurts now. It's okay if I'm in a session. It's fine. But, you know, and I still want to be empathetic to my family and my friends when they're, they're going through something. But it hits a little different now. It hits different because it's almost like it feels like it's the chalkboard scratching down, like the nails on the chalkboard. It's like, man it feels so off because I just feel like this is the, the words don't make sense to me no more because nothing makes sense to me ever because everything we can want we can have it's it's that easy I, I there were some times where I, I couldn't sleep I stressed out about work relationships money things like that um like I lost that other job in July so I lost my occupational therapy my whole fucking ten and a half years degree and everything but you know obviously I can still practice now I got my medical license back but I, I don't fucking want it I don't need it I don't need it I don't need to go back to to work the full-time job work no I yes I still do my mediumship I'm a counselor I work with kids help them with martial arts do a lot of work with autism but I'm not working for anybody I haven't worked for anyone for years but I'm not I don't even have the fucking report to anybody because I took a hold of, you know what? I'm not fucking doing it no more. I'm not doing it little by little. That energy just seemed off for me. I wanted to be, I'm in Jersey now. I wanted to be able to go back and forth, make my own hours and do what I want. I do. I don't have any set schedule. I make my own schedule. It's because I created it. The energy I wanted. I was like, I'm not having that shit. No way. That's so easy. It's, 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 Easy but hard. You just have to believe it. You have to believe it. And my life will continue to change as it has in the last year, six months, August. It's changed tremendously because I started to realize I can create it. So you just first have to believe it. And it might sound insane because it sounds insane to even me, the skeptic. But when I look back in my journal, because I always talk about journaling and journaling, and I look at what I've created since August, Holy shit, it's not like six months or whatever. My life has changed so much, and I still have work to do because I still keep falling down on an emotional scale. I don't stay high enough. But if I can just keep it at neutral or vibrate higher, I can't imagine. Like, I will be in my house in Miami or California or wherever I decide it to be for my vacation house. That will happen because this shit works. But the first thing you have to do is believe and not believe it's crazy. You have to believe in the truth of so I also created a group on Facebook, if you guys are following me, and um, it is a lot of my clients that I've been working with there a long time are in this group, and it's um, really meant to raise our vibrations for us to work together to um, help each other, and it's called the body, mind, and soul, the balance, and it's really a really cool group, and if you work with me, you get put in this group. So, I'm going to do a universal reading. Let me get my cards out. And mind you, this universal reading that I do all the time is meant for anyone who it resonates with. So, if someone might hear this, and they're just like, oh my God, like, I totally relate to that, then this reading's for you, okay? And this, I always use the Rider weight deck card, and... Um, I always pick five cards, and that's how Spirit told me to do it. So let's see who this resonates with. I'm shuffling the cards, and I pull five cards out. One, two, three, four, 
side. Now, I still channel these cards. I don't use just the psychic channel. I do talk to spirit, and they give me answers through the cards, and this works for me. So let's see what we got here. It's very interesting spread. It's different. So let's see. You are, whoever this reading for is definitely going to find, like, a place, like they're going to claim a place, like a home, a stake in a, a spot. This could be um, a second home, a new home, or just some place you're going to be just like, this is my home, and you're going to be really comfortable with it. It's just going to be super, super amazing. And you're going to be, whoever gets this new place or home, it's going to be like not a new relationship because this looks like a relationship that you've known for a while someone that you've been with, but this relationship is going to be like even more passionate and it's going to be increasing. So this is a relationship you, that, that you've had, but it's still growing. There's going to be a lot of celebration in your life, a lot of triumph over obstacles, a lot of feeling like you finally hashtag passed your fucking test. Like you're going to be like moving fast forward ahead in one triumph after another definitely been fighting some battles, but you're getting stronger mentally, spiritually, physically, everything about you is getting stronger and stronger. And each battle that you're given, you feel like you're like a giant. You can just knock everything down that comes your way. There's nothing that holds you back. In the meantime, you're keeping a balance. You're able to balance like life stresses and you're just kind of chilling in that emotional scale. You stay a lot in neutral. You're learning how to keep that balance. When things get rocky, you balance it back out again. You don't fall down for too long. And you're definitely getting a new opportunity. It's like a new prize. There's like a, a new way of bringing you finance or currency or whatever you want to call it. It's just abundance. It's coming to you. It's just looking you right in the face. So if this reading resonated for you, then this is for you. And I always like to give a manifestation. The manifestation just kind of solidifies this reading too. So if I tell you a manifestation and you're able to see it, that's kind of like a synchronicity, meaning that you're working towards your big manifestation. So the man manifestation that I'm given today is like a wand. So it could be like a magic wand. It could be um, a stick wand or any kind of wand, like a, a staff or something like that. So if you see any type of staff or a wand or a stick, that's your manifestation. And I like to give you like, three to five days to find this. So I hope this reading resonated with somebody. And I'm going to bring Shay on, and we're going to go into chat. Let's see if Shay comes on, and she'll tell us when she's here. Of we'll course chat. I'm coming on. I couldn't miss my <laughs> Gina time. <laughs> well, hello, hello, Shay. Hello. And, and for all of you, if you're listening to the first time, this is my producer, Shay. She always helps me and we come on and we, we interact with chat because most of the time I'm in Jersey here in my archaic world where I don't have my computer. <laughs> it's kind of good. Like I was telling her because I'm like disconnected from TV, uh, internet. I got my phone, but I don't interact that much on it. So let's see. What do we got in chat today? Um, well, we do have one question so far. Okay. Um, and I'm going to do my best to read this. All right. It's a for, uh, Joanna. Okay. And she says, I have been working on my vibe for a few years now. And what I have noticed is I have low dips below neutral for like one to two days. I also hear by a lot of spiritual teachers and etc. about purging energy. And this is normal and part of the process. Do you have a take on this? Sometimes I feel it's just so stupid and and unnecessary to dip low for almost no reason. Okay, so I'll definitely need to channel this one. Good question. So give me a second. So it's easy to slide back down the emotional scale because it feels comfortable. So if you're down there in the emotional scale and you're in like fear, shame, guilt, apathy, and you're down there for a while, and you're just like, you're in there, and you're, you're fearful, oh, whether it's, I'm going to get fired from my job, or 
how am I going to pay for my rent or oh, my, is this boyfriend going to break up with me or oh, am I getting fat or oh, whatever it is that you find that fear and you're just all of a sudden you're like, fuck this, I'm going to pull my energy up. I'm not feeling this way. I'm going to, you know, get confident in myself and I'm pull my energy up when you're there. But you're getting pulled back down again because you were down there for a while and your emotional scale and your homeostasis needs to slip back down. It falls back down because it's, it was there. Whether you're there for an hour or two, doesn't matter. You were still there. And it's got to keep pulling yourself back up. And the longer you work on this, the less time you'll spend down there. And you'll be down there. And you'll be like, oh, my God. And I was down there for a day or two. You pull yourself back up. I was down there for another day or two. Pull you back. I was down there for a half a day. I was down there for an hour. But it, it's always going to be a, a, a road. It's a battle. Like, you can't... I've never met someone that has been able to stay up in that high energy for ever. You're going to slide back down. But when you slide back down, you, you run back up. Like, fast, run down. But you don't stay down there for too long because... You start to feel it. Even myself, like when I fell back down the emotional scale, I lived in it. I lived in the hell of the end of the emotional scale. But now, like, I feel it. When my toe touches lack, empathy, I mean, apathy, lack, fear, shame, guilt, my toe just touches it. I'm like, oh, it feels so horrible. I got to run back up. But I, I can't say that I don't fall back down. You're going to continually fall to process. I don't know of any soul that stays at the top and, and, and even the guru, gurus they'll still fall they're still going to fall like they don't stay in, in light they might stay there for years but there'll be times when they're going to fall down there it might just be for a minute but whatever it is it's going to be a battle and you, the, the goal is to stay down there for shorter and shorter periods of time but you're going to take those dips you're going to hit those bottoms you're going to hit the lows and it's just the strategy it's just like a drug addict would find a strategy stay away from this corner don't hang out with that person don't drink because that's going to lead to this don't you know don't hang out with that family member like that's your trigger your trigger so you'll find your trigger for the emotional scale like oh that's my trigger i'm going to go hang out with that guy or oh my god that's my trigger because i'm going to go to lunch and this bitch is going to be there and then you stay away from them because you don't want to slide down for too too long so did I answer all parts of that question? <laughs> um, she added, it It feels horrible. Yeah, to fall down, yeah. Um, so for me, and maybe for a lot of you guys there, when I was there in fear, shame, and guilt, for a while I didn't even know it felt horrible. I was just there. I didn't even know anything about energy. I was just didn't even get that it felt horrible. I was just there. But when it started feeling horrible, that's a fucking good sign because all of a sudden I knew what feeling horrible was. When before I didn't know, I was just down there chilling in shame, fear, and guilt. Like till I realized, like, holy shit, this is like a low vibe. People would be like, high vibes, high energy. I used to say it, high vibes. High, I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. High vibes, high energy. Like, what the fuck am I talking about? I get it now, but no one really gets it. Ninety percent of the people that say, oh, vibing high, vibing high. They don't even know their emotional scale. They don't know their emotions. They don't study it. They don't know it. They don't feel it. They don't know what it's like to get out of it. They don't know how to work it to get out of it. They don't know the fucking work that goes into it once you fall down. The purging of everything, the rearranging, the, it's the self-care, the work. It's fucking hard. And I know what to do, and it's hard. But these people just walk around. Now, we got so many gurus, so many energy people who, who are self-proclaimed, like, Riding high, that is, like, no, you're not, bitch. You don't know what you're talking about. No, this is work. <laughs> it's yeah. hard. So, yeah, so it feels horrible, and that's a great sign when it feels horrible because at least you know it feels horrible. Some people just sit down there and they keep complaining and talking shit. They don't even know that's horrible. So when it feels horrible, yay, you know what horrible feels like. Do we have anything? Did that answer her question? <laughs> she, uh, Joanna said yes, she did answer it, and thank you. And MI just added, so the takeaway is to stay away from triggering from, sorry, let me start over, because, so the takeaway is to stay away from triggering people and events to save your energy and not get pulled into bad energy, not confront and purge. 
Well, okay. So here's the thing. Yes, you want to stay away from the triggers, but oh fuck, man! Like I, for me, I crave the triggers because I want to be down there in that low emotional scale. The negative energies want to pull me there. It's always a pull against good and evil, bad, bad and good, whatever it was. So. It's a, I fight my little energy to stay up there in neutral, and then the bad energy calls me, whether that's a relationship, a job, a friend, or whatever, and they say, come down here with me again. And my energy goes, here I come, here I come. It's not easy. But, yeah, that's the thing. You want to try to stay away from it, but I, I don't know anyone that finds it easy. Like, great, let me find the person that does because it's hard. So confront it. Do you want to confront it? I, I Like, do you want to confront the – negative energy like that to me like again i have my doctor's degree i've been a counselor for years i've worked in many aspects of counseling and drug and alcohol i worked in, in relationships marriage i worked in teens I, i've done counseling in every aspect so there was different parts of counseling and, and i see it in working with kids and just everything i did and people will talk about what well, that's from your childhood oh that's this i don't believe in that you know i go break the catholic religion like I just committed murder. I go tell the police, police I just killed somebody. And he goes, it's all forgotten about, child. Here, do your penance. Five Hail Marys, and there you go. It's done. Done. I killed someone. It's over with, right? Done. Forgotten about. That's really how it goes in the Catholic religion, right? That's how it goes in energy. That's how it goes in spirit. Like, we're not going to talk about yesterday. Yesterday's gone. People, and I never understood that. So when people, like I could talk about my childhood, like my mother was killed at two months old. I was raised with a bunch of uncles. I never had family. Like I fucking, I could talk about, oh, this is why I'm this way. But no, that, I mean, that's, that keeps bringing up, confronting old shit that I should be burying. Why do I want to keep bringing it up? I don't believe in that. Like, oh, this happened from my child. I don't believe in that type of therapy. Oh, let's look at this, what triggered you from your child. No, that's, like, let's talk about it. Let's put it in the past. And stop bringing it with you. You're dragging that fucking thing with you. It's like dragging a big cast around your leg. And here I am with all my childhood shit. Look, get the fuck over it, man. It seems harsh and stuff, but that's you, you're going to bring it along. I remember people always tell me, oh, you're so amazing for the childhood, the life you had. I just thought, the fuck? Like, I, I can't say that anyone who knew about my life would be like, oh, that's such a shame. Really? Because I never let it get to me. It's just like whatever it is, and I just move on with the next day. You, you, you can't. You can't let it get to you. At some point, you have to take responsibility for your actions and your decision and can't blame the past. Right. But that's it. And that's the people drag that with them again and again. Well, that's because of my, my childhood. That's why. I get it. But you know why? Because they're stuck in their subconscious yeah. mind. They're not living in their energy. If and you know it's from your childhood, them. then you should be able to uh, shake it. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. and and I can't say because as a human, these people's um, memories or whatever, they get stuck in their subconscious mind, but we didn't come here to live through our fucking mind. That mind, that brain that we have is so that we can go, I have to pick up my left arm to eat. I have to, that's what we need it for because we're just energy. And when we're energy, we don't need to pick up our left arm or, you know, we just go by our heart, our feelings. But people get stuck in that mind and that that subconscious mind. And I remember when I worked in stroke patients, outpatient, inpatient clinics, I worked in rehab for stroke and things like that. I would have to bring back, you know, their brain. I have to teach them how to walk again, how to eat again, things like that. And that was in their subconscious mind. I had to bring it all back yeah. because those are stored memories. But you can store this other shit in your mind or brain or you can live through the energy. That's what I'm talking about. The show is about like living through your energy. Your energy doesn't talk about the fucking shit that happened to your brain or your mind or your body. It doesn't talk about it. It's, it's living in the present. Yesterday's gone, man. There's a song. Yesterday's gone. I don't even know what it was. But just like that's it. Live in the energy of it. I, I don't even... Think about what the fuck happened yesterday anymore. I, I don't even know. I, I would be, don't you remember this? I don't fucking remember. No, I don't. I don't remember because I'm in today. I don't fucking know what happened yesterday because I'm creating shit for today. I don't know what happened. Yesterday's fucking gone. I'm not bringing it with me. I have to talk about it. I give it a few seconds and, you know, that's what happened. This is where it was at yesterday. But it's today. And guess what? My feelings and my emotions change from yesterday to that today. And every second, like, 
it, it completely changes. I, I change, I might fucking say I, something today and, and, and tomorrow change. It's a, it's not consistent. Not so. You can't always say, well, you said this. I might have said it yesterday. Today I'm saying this. I don't fucking know. Every day is different. Yep. yep. <laughs> I agree. Do we have... <laughs> Do we have anything yes. else in there? Yes. Holly would like to know, should you put all your manifestations all out at one time or just the most important to you? I'm, who said this question? Holly. P-A-U-L-Y, Holly. Holly, H, H. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, man, this is such a good question because there's no end to the manifestation. You don't have to limit it. You know, I'm just going to manifest this one little thing. I just wanted one little car. Fuck that. I got 50 of them out there. Put as many as you want because the more you have, the less emphasis you have and the less lack that you're putting in that <clears throat> intention. So put them all out there because this way you're not focusing on one shit and then it's all going to just start happening. You're like, oh, God, like I didn't have that. But it's, the more you focus on the one, you become down there in lack and fear and shame and guilt whatever, lack, you didn't have it yet, fear, am I going to get it? So put one out there and forget about it, man. Put one out there and don't even put emphasis on it. And then put another one out there. You don't have to just put one out there. Nice. So. I'm double checking the chat here to make sure. Okay. Uh, give them a second to... Mm -hmm. I'll have, I have a question for you. We have a few more minutes, so. Um, okay. How do you protect your energy? How do you not let oh, others this is bring another you down? Great question. I'm going to totally channel this because I love it. So hold on. Protecting your energy. It, 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 you couldn't ask a better question. Protecting your energy is, is done all the time. It's as simple as just, when I walk out the door, just if I walk out the door, I put the mirrors around me. Before I fucking shut that door, I put a white light around all my cats and all my stuff. White light protection. I put the mirrors around me. So anything any fucking asshole wants to say against me, it's going to bounce back and go to them three or five times worse. Don't fuck with me. Don't, don't try to do something with me because people know. You try to fuck with me, a lot of bad shit happens because I'm protected. My energy is protected. And you put anything back on me, it's coming back to you and eating you the fuck up in so many ways because energy is protection. It's just as easy as just protecting yourself, saying you're protected. And then if somebody comes around me, people are like, you just like looked in their face and walked away because I felt their energy. I put up my shield, put my barrier, and walked away from them and all their fake shit and all their fake energy because I don't want it to infect me. So I just, I hear it, I fucking protect them, I walk away. It, I, I, I could stare you right in the face and just don't even fucking listen to you. I don't know what you're saying because I know that your energy sucks. I've protected it. And yes, I'm an empath. I can feel. But if you don't and you're not able to yet and you haven't perfected that, you just walk out of your house and just say that anything today that, you know, is negative or goes against me, I will not let it touch me. And just words. Words are fucking bond. Words are energy. You just say that shit. And then nothing's going to touch you. Nothing negative will touch you. It's, it's, it's like that. Just like energy is currency. Words, words, thoughts, feelings. That's for your shit. That's your energy. You make it up. Put it out there. Nice. <laughs> did that answer you? Yes, it did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was good, man. I like that answer. <laughs> ah, see. I have a few questions so, yeah. up my sleeve sometimes. <laughs> it's funny because like I'm really into this now. They're really teaching me a lot. Yeah. They're taking me to a whole new level, and I'm um, definitely working with my clients with this. Definitely, that's why I started my Facebook group with my clients. You know, the, a lot of my good clients and a couple of my friends are in it. But it's just like all my clients that I'm working with, and just get them to this level and working with them is helping me because I channel. So I'm hearing when I channel, and it's just it's taken me. I, I've changed so much. Since I have to not even say year, my birthday's in August. So since then, like I've really just I'm I'm to the point where I don't give a fuck about really anything, nobody, nothing anyone says. Don't give a fuck about nothing, and it's it's such a great freeing thing. No, I I even today I just flipped out on 
family, my member. Nobody even, like, I'm nice. Everyone will see, like, she's so nice and sweet. But don't fucking push me because then you're going <laughs> to see what's coming out. <laughs> and they got a good look at it today, and things are going the way I, they should have been going because six months ago I wasn't able to say, you know what, I, I, I'll fucking walk away from shit. If it doesn't go my way, it's not vibrating where I want, I don't give a fuck. I'm walking away from it. If I don't like the energy of it, I don't like, you know, the the relationship with a, a, a guy or I don't like the fucking work relationship or I don't have to deal with someone, I'm fucking gone. It's not worth any of my energy no more. I don't give a fuck walking away from it. It has to be that way. you got to protect your energy. You can't let that shit infect you. You can't compromise your boundaries, your feelings. For no one, I've done it for, like I said, for years in many, many ways. Not no more. I, I don't give a fuck. You can't. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm working on getting there. It's, it's not easy, man. It's not. It's that. It is not easy. It's not. Do we got anything else? Nope. That, that, I think I covered everything. All right. Well, thank you, everybody that listened. Of course, always thank you, Shay. Thank you, Matt, for Paranormal Buzz Radio, which you can always find on Facebook and Instagram. And are you on Twitter, too, Paranormal Buzz Radio? Oh, yeah. We're everywhere. <laughs> and um, I'm not big on Twitter. And then another thing I've been talking about a lot, just quickly before we end, is social media. Talk about protecting your energy. Like, right. There was a, Jesus. There was a time I was caught up in it. Not even too long ago, probably. Again, less than a year. And um, I'd be looking at it and I'd say, oh, like, God, they're so lucky. They're this, they're that. Oh, God, this, that. Or, uh, you know, some, someone that I'd be like, oh, this, you know, he, jealousy. I had a lot of jealousy. And no, I don't give a fuck no more. I just look at that like it's all fake. I realize most of it's fake. Like, I have to do social media for my work and, that, and I also, my Instagram for, Myself, it's, it's a great way to have your own picture album, raise your own vibration, post your own selfies. When you feel good about yourself, don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. Post it for you. You know, it, that, that's what it is. If it becomes fake and you're like, oh, I don't know if I should post this. Do I, post whatever you want and make it for you. And, and that's all about you. You know, your work requires social media. Post it, raise other people's energy, but just make it for you. But it's the people that get caught up in that. The Instagram models, God bless them, you know, they're making money and stuff. But people get fucking weird with it. Like, they get obsessed like, with this. Like, oh, God, it's like, it's it's not really the person, for one. It's filtered the fuck. It's not really who they are. But, you know, I don't say it. it's their fault. They're making a lot of money. They're doing it. But it's the weirdo that gets obsessed and thinks that's what life is. They start living in that social media world. Those Instagram models or their Instagram men or women that are making the money, they're not, they're not the wackos, man. They're the ones making money. The wackos are the people that are obsessed with them, thinking they're everything when they don't give a fuck about anybody. They're making money off these people. It's just the people that live the social media life that think, oh, God, this person is this. They liked my picture. It's so whack. you got to just live and just realize that's just fucking made up energy, most of it. So... <laughs> I agree. You don't that's see the truth nother. behind it is the problem. They, <laughs> that's a whole nother show, yeah, right? Oh, it you can don't be. know because it could be a whole some series. People, yeah, I know my family will be like, oh, but you're going so many places, you're having such a great like. You don't fucking know what I'm doing. I might be posting that picture because I fucking want to bring my vibration up. I might be sitting there crying my fucking eyes out, and I post a picture from a fucking week or two ago saying I'm having a great time because I wanted to do it for me. Yeah. That don't fucking mean I'm living that fucking picture. No. My shit ain't even real, okay? Because I post a lot of shit that I'm um, having a you know, positive thing for my clients, positive things just to bring myself up. That's, I'm telling you right now, like, I post a lot of fucking shit that I, is not real, not you know, I post it again for other people or for myself, but you can't take that shit to heart. You can't. Yeah. All right. So thank you all again. And you can always find me on social media. And um, if you ever want a session, you can inbox me. And I do personal sessions. So, And what else do I have? Uh, <laughs> nothing I can think of. <laughs> you got anything to say? Um, your next show live will be 
February 3rd. Okay, February 3rd. Man, February 3rd is coming to February. And um, I like February. One of my other months I like, I like February. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Except for, you know, Valentine's Day. It's like the love month. Teddy bears and chocolate and <clears throat> flowers and shit. <laughs> I hate Valentine's uh, Day. I don't celebrate it. You know, I, I used to always, like, tell my guy, this is it. This is what I want. Like, make a big thing about it. I, I guess I still like it because I like the exchange of that shit. I like the love stuff, man. I guess I do. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of pressure on Valentine's Day like there is for, like, Christmas. I fucking visit everybody. I got to fucking do all this. That, that sucks. And that, I don't like the pressures of Christmas. I don't like the pressures of... um. Thanksgiving, those two holidays I really hate because it's just a lot of visiting pressure. I, I hate that. I have to go do something. I have to get presents and cards, and I hate all that. Valentine's Day is just a lot about love. That's kind of why I like that holiday. I love New Year's because it's like a new beginning, but I'm still trying to get over the holiday of Christmas and Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, and I will see you in February. Well, I'll talk to you in February. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Shay. Everyone have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.